In this video, I will be explaining the main three logarithmic rules and how we can use them to expand or condense a logarithmic problem. So there are technically four main logarithmic rules, but the fourth one we will reserve for a future video. So I just want to focus on the three main ones which are very important for expanding or condensing logs. So the first rule is called the product rule. And essentially what the product rule states is that the log, regardless of the base, of the product of two values is going to be equal to the sum of two separate logs where you split apart the values inside the log. The second rule is called the quotient rule. And what the quotient rule states is that the log of the quotient of two values is equal to the difference of two logs where the two values are split. And the final rule is called the power rule. And this states that the log of some value raised to a power is equal to the power times the log. So essentially, you could just bring the exponent out and multiply it in front instead. Now, there is proof for these rules. If you are interested in knowing the proofs, I will upload a video showing the proofs for all these rules later. But the proofs are just to understand them, but you don't really need to know the proofs. At the end of the day, you need to know and memorize these rules. So let's focus on expanding logs. This is when you use the rules to break one complicated looking log into multiple smaller, easy to chew logs. Let's take for example, log base two of eight X. So you're being asked to expand this log. Now when you take a look at this, you see log base two of eight and you may think, oh, that's solvable. I know log base two of eight is three because two cubed is eight. But the problem is this X is attached to the eight. So we can use these properties to break this apart. Now I notice that this is a product of two values inside the logarithm. So using the product rule, I can break this up into log base two of eight plus log base two of x. And now that I've broken this apart, I can actually solve this log in particular. So this is equal to three plus log base two of x. This is as much as the problem can be expanded and simplified. When you expand, your goal is to try to simplify the problem as much as possible, meaning if there is a log that you can solve, you should solve it. Let's do another example. Let's say we have here So here I am saying common log of z divided by 100. If you remember, the common log is base 10, and you don't need to write the base 10. So here I see, well, I know common log of 100 is 2 because 10 squared is 100. However, the problem is inside the log, this is a little bit more complicated, the z is attached but I see I'm getting the log of a quotient of two values. So I can use the quotient rule to break this down. And I can say that this is log z minus log 100. And now I see I can actually simplify this because log 100 
as we said before, is 2. And there you have it. This problem has been completely expanded and simplified. Notice here we expanded it, but when you expand something, always remember to simplify it. So if you see a log that you actually can solve, you should go ahead and solve it. Let's take another example. Let's take log base 5 of x cubed. Notice here, I have this power of 3 up here. So what I can do is I can bring the 3 out using the power rule, and this is log base 5 of x. So notice here, we were able to bring the 3 exponent out using the power rule. Basically, expanding just means you're breaking a logarithm as much as possible and taking everything out of it as much as you can. Let's do a problem here that combines all three rules. Let's take here the natural log. Remember, this means log base e of x squared times y cubed divided by z to the fifth. Now, it may seem a little intimidating, but once again, let's try to break this down. So first thing right off the bat I notice here is I have a quotient. So I can break this down using the quotient rule. This is ln of x squared times y cubed minus ln of z to the fifth. And there we go. Now I have broken this down. Now, now that we've broken this down, I see, oh, I can break this down even further. I notice a product in here. So I can break this logarithm up into two as well using the product rule. And last but not least, I can further break this down even more because I notice all of these logarithms have powers in them. I'm getting logarithms of values raised to some power. So I can bring the powers out from each of these three. So finally, I am left with this. And this final answer cannot be broken down any further, and it has been completely expanded and simplified. I want to talk about three common mistakes that I notice before we go any further. So, the first mistake that I do notice a lot in my class is if you are given a problem like this, The mistake I see people make is that this is or I see people do this as well. And both of these are incorrect. This is meant to be a trick question to stump you up because there is no rule there is no sum or difference rule. So this here actually is the most simplified this can ever be. This cannot be broken down. Remember, you are not multiplying by a logarithm, so you cannot distribute the logarithm, okay? And this is not the subtraction of two separate logs, so you can't do this rule either. So when you run into a problem like this, this cannot be broken down any further, so do not attempt it. There, again, there is no such thing as a sum or difference rule, only a product or a sum rule. So do not make that mistake and be very careful with that. Another common mistake I see is when we run into a problem like this. So normally, the first step, everyone understands. We see a quotient here, so we break this down.
But here's where the mistake comes into play, that people here see a product, and yes, you can use the product rule to break this down, but here's the mistake. This is actually a very critical mistake that can lead to um, a very wrong answer because the mistake here is that they did not, that they forgot to put the parentheses or brackets, whatever you want to use. Because yes, this does represent the sum of two logs. However, you have to subtract this sum. So if you wanted to remove the parentheses, you would have to distribute the negative. So be very careful with those type of problems as well. Pay attention to what you are doing. And now, the last misconception I see is this one. So the mistake that I see happen many times is that people bring the two out of this log and say that this is log x, y. Now, this is not correct. Here's the reason why. Because this two, this exponent two, is only being applied to the y, not to the x. This would be correct. This would be correct if we were doing log of x, y squared, because both the x and the y are being squared. Therefore, you could treat the x, y as one value that's being squared, and then you could bring the power out to be that. But this here, only the y is being squared, so you cannot apply the power rule yet. In order to use the power rule, you have to separate these two first. So the correct way, is to say that this is log x plus log y squared. First, you use the product rule to break this product apart. And now that we have this power, this value and power isolated, you can now use the power rule. And this is the correct answer to this. So once again, pay attention and be very careful with, um, with what you're doing. Pause this video and take some time to expand and simplify these logs as much as possible. So pause this video and I will show the answers in five seconds. Here are the answers to these five problems. So let's focus on condensing logarithmic problems now. So I rewrote down the rules, the basic logarithmic rules. What most people fail to remember is that an equal sign can be read the same way from left to right as with right to left. So in these problems here, working from left to right, we were expanding the logarithm because we were breaking the logarithm into two, sep into two new logs or bringing things out of the logarithm, like with the power rule. Now, condensing a logarithm is the opposite, where we are now going from right to left. So notice we are getting multiple logs and putting them together into one log. So what you need to pay attention to is in order for these two rules, for the product and quotient rule to apply, the logs have to be the same base in order for you to condense them. Also, there can be no multiplier. The logs have to be completely isolated. So if there is anything multiplying the log, you have to use the power rule first to bring anything into the log. And then you can use product and quotient rule to condense the logs. Let's take, for example, this logarithmic problem. Here we have the sum of two logs. Now, they share the same exact base, so 
we can use the basically the reverse product rule. So this would be the same thing as saying log base 5 of x times y. You see, if you know the product rule, if you now go backwards, you are technically expanding the log. So what you do going backwards should make sense. Let's take, for example, this problem here. log y minus log z. Well, you have the difference of two logs that do share the same base, base 10, because this is the common log. So we can condense this log into one log using the reverse quotient rule. And this is the final condensed log. And finally, This here, because we have that number multiplying the log, you can bring the 7 up to be a power using the reverse power rule. So log base 8 of x raised to the 7. And this is the condensed version. So again, we're just doing the reverse of expanding. You're bringing everything back into the log and creating one simple log instead. Let's do some more challenging problems. Let's take a look at this problem here. So the first thing I would do here, I, I notice a difference, and these logs have the same base. So I know eventually I'm going to have to use the reverse quotient rule. However, the problem is I have the 5 and 2 multiplying the logs. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is use the power rule to bring the 5 and the 2 back in as exponents. So I end up getting here log of x raised to the 5 minus log of 3 raised to the 2. Now that I have the logs isolated and they are the same base, I can now use the quotient rule to put this together into one log. And this would be log of x to the 5th divided by 9. Why did I say 9? because 3 squared is 9. And just like you do with expanding, if you can do any mathemat simple mathematical operation, you should. So 3 squared is 9, so you should simplify that as well. And that is the final answer. Let's take, for example, this problem here. Now, once again, I have two logs of the same base and they're adding. So I know I can use the product rule, but I can't do that yet because I have this half and the one third multiplying. You cannot use the product rule unless the logs are isolated by themselves. So first thing I'm gonna use is the power rule to bring these back in as exponents. So this would end up being ln of x raised to the half plus ln of x raised of 5 raised to the one third. Now I'm going to do this step because once again when you're condensing you want to take it back to its simplest form. So it would be best to rewrite an exponent like this, a fractional exponent, as a radical. It looks better, it looks cleaner, especially when you are condensing. So this would be ln of square root of x plus ln of third root of 5. Now that I have two logarithms of the same base that are adding each other, I can use the reverse product rule and say this is ln of square root of x times the third root of 5. And there we go. We get our final answer. A couple of common mistakes that I see is, for example, here I have log base 2 of x times log base 2 of y. This here is not equal to log base 2 of xy, because that would then be implying that this is log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of y, which is not equal to this 
product. So be very careful with this. This is not correct. This actually is as simplified as this can get. We cannot combine these. So the other common mistake I see is this problem here, where they say that this is log base 2 of 35. Now, why is this wrong? This is not correct. This is wrong because these logs are not of the same base. Therefore, they cannot be combined together. Therefore, this here is as simplified as the problem can get. There's nothing else you can do to condense this because they are not of the same base. You can only condense the logs and use the power, the product or quotient rule if they are the same base. Pause this video and take a few minutes to see if you can figure out these condensing problems. So condense these and simplify as much as possible. So pause this video and when you press play, the answers will be up in five seconds. Here are the final answers. Hopefully you were able to figure these out. If not, go back, rewatch the video and see if you could figure out where you went wrong. So good luck and see you in the next video.